I'm uh, Karen Ronsley. Uh, I derive from Ireland, uh, where I was uh, uh, not partially brought up um, uh, in France and uh, uh, mostly in uh, Britain. And, uh, I work here as an environmentalist uh, concerned with the water harvesting systems, which are uh, hundreds of years old and ter totally um, ignored by uh, local government, um, disregarded and thought of as a, a nuisance rather than an asset to the city. This is a, a tragedy because I've uh, been here now three and a half years and I've had virtually no help at all from the regional government. They have shown nearly virtual zero interest in maintaining. Now we have a sewerage flow in the Gulab Saga, which is all around you here. The Gulab Saga, the, the Beche is this one, smaller one here that you now see. And on the other side is the bigger one, which is uh, now full of sewerage, because they're allowing a sewerage flow into this uh, lovely water body. It is full of fish, cormorants come here in large numbers, uh, herons, <coughs> and even pelicans. And there used to be quite a population of turtles living in here. And I clean these water places not only for the sake of the, the fact that the structures are heritage of uh, this city, are going back hundreds of years in some cases, but because the w water is a, a, a place where animals and birds and uh, fish find refuge in a world totally dominated by human beings now, we must give little refuges to the living creatures that once inhabited our world and now are being pushed into the very last corners for survival. We have to realize that we are not the only animal on the earth. We are actually accompanied by thousands of other creatures that need also life and space. And we push them into virtual extinction. Wherever they exist in any number, we wipe them out usually. So we must now include animals in our, um, in our planning. We must include birds and water creatures. They, they need their space too, and that's why I do this work, mainly for the sake of the creatures that live in the water. And for children who could learn to swim in these places, but now because of the toxic waste going into these water bodies, even children are not safe uh, to swim in these places. But in the, in the other places that are called step wells, which uh, you will see in, the, in due course, they are um, beautifully maintained now by two hotels, the Rush Hotel and the uh, Otta uh, uh, Restaurant and Hotel um, grouping. They maintain both of these uh, uh, water uh, step wells, water harvesting step wells, and they're, they're very, uh, the water is very good quality, full of fish, which we've also introduced into the water systems here. Wherever a jalra or a bowery, a bowery is a type of step well in platforms. The flight of steps, it's sort of like an escalator going down into the water table. So you've got a flight of steps, and you've got a platform, then you've got another flight of steps, and so on. And these bowries, are maybe there's more than a hundred in this city, in different parts of the city, and almost totally unknown to the general public. Only a few tourists ever discover them. And mostly they're ignored and they're not maintained either. They, they become uh, places where people dump their rubbish from the neighboring communities. So these are all in need of resuscitation and uh, maintenance, so they can be viewed as um, auditoriums for meditation, uh, for uh, quiet places for people to gather and do pujas, to, be, uh, uh, to get the blessings of nature and allow nature to, uh, to flower a little bit. In, in, in small corners of the city, nature can be allowed to flower and then be used as an educational media for schools, for children, to see nature operating again in water. And water is the, the most um, necessary uh, form of environment for nature to, uh, to revive. And so the, the water must be viewed in a much more integrated way. 
in the way a city views itself. Water is a central feature of a desert city. It's not just uh, an odd, odd place where a few tourists can take a photograph. It is actually a, 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 a concentration of the most essential element in human life and in all animal life, which is water, which we have pushed to the background in our lives because we have pumped water coming down pipelines and so on. We have said, no, water doesn't really matter. It's all controlled now and we don't need to do anything any longer about water. It's all being undertaken by government. The public should show themselves as interested to have water places, points where water is maintained beautifully and allowed to be used by children for swimming, for learning to swim, for uh, the wildlife to proliferate a little bit and uh, regain a foothold inside cities. These are places of great um, benefit, spiritual as well as um, physical, and the safety of the uh, whole communities is also at stake. When a, uh, a water system like this becomes polluted, it carries malaria, dengue, cholera, all sorts of waterborne diseases can proliferate. So what I would say is bring them back to life, maintain them properly, and government should show a serious concern for these places. Not just put up fancy railings and spend a lot of money on inaccessibility, but actually have uh, uh, workers who are trained to understand ecology to maintain these places and protect them and guide the tourists and visitors of the, to the city, which is a major tourist center of Rajasthan, a major tourist center and could be increased enormously if people would show respect for these places. If essentially government would come forward and say, yes, these are very important places for our city. They could plant trees, have gardens around the edge of the, the place here. There are no gardens, there are only car parks now and derelict go-downs. There's a school here, empty mostly, that never seems to have any pupils in, but it's a huge building. It's a palace, in fact. It's the remnants of a palace. Here's another building across here. It's a palace, empty. No one sits there, no one uses this building. It's empty, it's a go-down again. They're all go-downs now, see, that's a car park. And here, there's a, a, a narrow alleyway used as a latrine by the public because they don't have proper latrines in this area. So we would say, let the government make a plan for this area and do something about maintaining it properly and bringing the people who visit this city to see these places with pride and show them that as these wonderful places were once the epicenters of social activity in these uh, cities, these desert cities like Udaipur, uh, Bundi, another wonderful city full of step wells, and uh, our city of Jodhpur. These three cities should be seen in the glory that they once were, and that can easily be done with a little bit of money and a bit of concern, public um, issues being taken uh, seriously about tourism, not just digitalization of everything, but actually to make these places uh, respected because they're beautified and because people love to use them and see, that, see them in their uh, original uh, grandeur.